This video is brought to you by Captivating History. History is an unforgiving tale. For every story that has been penned, millions have been lost to the ashes of time. And who knows who writes these tales and for what purposes? You see an author's name on a hardback and you create a persona based on fragments of details. The sounds of his name, the features of his face, the place of his origin, etc. The person you're imagining, in all probability, never existed. No matter how someone expresses themselves, there exist possibilities of expression that will never be fulfilled. We do not know the socio-political context, we are unaware of the biases, yet we continue to read it with great zeal. As such, history may seem like stumbling in the dark. Every so often, your hand reaches out and grabs something tangible. Some collect these fragments in hopes of answers. Others to satiate their curious impulses. It captivates us, it moves us, it binds us. And despite all of that, none can claim them to be the ultimate truth. History has forgotten the greatest monarchs and remembered the most meager of men. Time remembers things to serve as nationalist propaganda or religious ideologies. Schools recall the greatness of the soil they stand on. Churches, temples, and mosques build monuments for their particular gods. For a change, we thought it responsible to look at the things communities, institutions, and ultimately individuals forget. Let's take a look at the events that, for reasons unbeknownst to anyone, time forgot. 1. The Nubian dynasty takes over Egypt and the Nile Valley. We start with one of the most significant events in African history. Modern-day Sudan contains almost 300 structurally intact pyramids, significantly more than Egypt. The construction of these pyramids is contributed to the Kingdom of Kush, which was formed by the Nubian pharaohs. Nubia originated in modern-day Sudan around 3000 BC, starting with the formation of Nile proper and extending towards the Mediterranean. Over the centuries, its relationship with Egypt intensified. Some years, trade would blossom. Other years, skirmishes would happen. Nubia, home to the Kushites, kept growing as an urban settlement, and the people even developed a second city called Napata. In the period of the New Kingdom, from 16th to 11th centuries BCE, Egypt established control of Nubia and invaded Palestinian and Syrian provinces, essentially becoming one of the largest empires of ancient times. But all things fade, no matter how magnificent. Thanks to invasions from the Assyrians, Persians, and the Greeks, Egypt started to disintegrate. King Kashta of the Kushites decided to form a kingdom by the name of Kush and became its first monarch. He attacked Egypt and was able to conquer Thebes. The religious tenets of Egyptians and Kushites were similar, and by appealing to religious sentiment, he was able to unify the region. His successor, Pai, extended his control throughout the Nile Valley, becoming the first pharaoh of Egypt's 25th dynasty. The Nubian dynasty continued to rule part or all of ancient Egypt from 747 BCE to 656 BCE. During this period, it ushered in an Egyptian renaissance. The combination of the two cultures produced some of the most intriguing artwork in African history. The Assyrian invasion of Egypt would drive so-called black pharaohs out of the region, forcing them to settle in the city of Moreau, where they continued to build pyramids and other monuments. 2. The Dreadnought Hoax We thought it was time for a little humor. Hosting important foreign emissaries is always an honor for a country, and usually much pomp and circumstance surrounds the visit. Sometimes, though, things go awry. In February of 1910, England suffered an embarrassing and memorable experience of just this sort. The crew of the English ship warship HMS Dreadnought received a telegram telling them that they were to host the Emperor of Abyssinia, which is modern-day Ethiopia. The pride of the English Navy, excited to be chosen for such an honor, pulled out all the stops, rolling out the red carpet for a royal welcome to the visiting dignitary. Upon their arrival, the Emperor and his entourage were met with full military honors and given a tour of the vessel fit for a king. The British Royal Navy had outdone itself. Well. They would have outdone themselves if any foreign dignitaries had actually graced their ship. Apparently, the entire entourage was a group of ambitious pranksters, 
and among their ranks was the novelist Virginia Woolf. The mischievous gang had painted their faces, put on ridiculous costumes, and spoke in a combination of gibberish and Latin, fooling Her Royal Highness's top military officers. The telegram had been a forgery, resulting in making the Navy the national laughingstock for months. The next day, an anonymous letter was sent to the local newspapers, taking responsibility for the prank, but the damage was done. Interestingly, this was Wolf's first contact with the national press, long before she was a famous author. 3. Ahsoka's Role in the Spread of Buddhism Buddhism is by no means a niche or cult ideology in the 21st century, but it did not start that way. Buddha supposedly lived from 563 BCE to 483 BCE. Some contest he lived almost 100 years later. Nevertheless, his teachings were quite limited in terms of global impact. His disciples would carry his ideas forth orally. They would preface it by saying, Ivem me sutam, thus I have heard. It was not until centuries later that people started to combine all that knowledge and compose Buddhist texts. So, how did this small ideology make its way throughout the Indian subcontinent, Central Asia, and South Asia? The answer is Ahsoka, an Indian ruler from the Maurya dynasty, who was in power from 268 BCE to 232 BCE. Controlling almost the entire Indian subcontinent, his influence and reach were second to none. When he came across the teachings of the Buddha, he felt inspired and empowered. He had never heard anything remotely like it. He felt the teachings were spiritually pure and should be taught to everybody in the realm. So, he took it upon himself to further the teachings of the then obscure figure. He sent emissaries to Sri Lanka. Ahsoka's son converted King Tisa and the Sri Lankan nobility to Buddhism. After converting, Tisa built the Mahavihara Monastery, which became an important Buddhist center. Some say that another son of Ahsoka was responsible for introducing the religion in Central Asia, but others dispute that. 4. Extreme Weather of 536 Let's head to the Dark Middle Ages for our next historical event. In the years 535 and 536, Europe went through a period of severe cooling. A large volcano eruption, probably in Asia, the Americas, or Europe, rendered an atmospheric dust veil in the Northern Hemisphere. Recent research places Iceland as the location of the volcano, but it is not certain. The dust was so thick and smoky that the sun's light would not reach the surface on most days and would seem bluish from afar. No light meant that there were virtually no shadows during daytime. The mysterious darkness took over Europe, the Middle East, and some parts of Asia for almost 18 months. As the sun's heat would not reach the earth, temperatures fell dramatically. In the summer of 536, the temperature averaged between 34 to 36 degrees Fahrenheit. It was the coldest decade in the past 2300 years, and the temperature turned every aspect of social life upside down. Droughts became common. There were crop failures across Eurasia. From the years 536 to 539, there was not enough bread to go around. People had to resort to storing large quantities of food whenever they could harvest their crops. The troubles did not end there either. In 541, the bubonic plague, known today as the Plague of Justinian, came raging in. The disease killed one-third of the Byzantine population. The slew of human and natural causes also contributed to the demise of the Eastern Roman Empire. 5. The Pig War Did you know that pigs have been the cause of a war between the United States and the United Kingdom? You heard that right. Triggered by the shooting of a pig, the Pig War is known by many names, such as the Pig and Potato War, the Pig Episode, the San Juan Boundary Dispute, and the Northwestern Boundary Dispute. It might be unwise to call it a war because there were no casualties on either side. Throughout most of the first half of the 19th century, the U.S. and Britain fought over the Oregon Territory's northern boundary. The Oregon Treaty of 1846 put things to rest for a while. The British established the Hudson Bay Company's presence on San Juan Island by setting up a salmon curing station in 1851 and a sheep farm in 1853. In the same year, the Americans claimed San Juan Island for themselves, and some Americans even moved on to the island. 
The conflict started when one of these Americans killed the pig of a Hudson Bay Company employee. The employee reported the shooter to the British authorities. The British wanted to arrest the shooter, whereas the Americans wanted to make sure that their people on the island were not harmed. The U.S. sent 64 troops to defend the Americans, and the British sent a frigate. The officers on the ground were far more level-headed than their superiors. They managed to defuse the situation, and a peaceful resolution was reached as both nations left some troops in the area until a permanent solution presented itself. 6. The Naughty Document Victors indeed write the tales of their times. In the fog of overarching narratives, we forget that, more often than not, all sides are culpable during the conflict. The same is true for the Second World War. On the one hand, we have the barbaric German outlook on life that Hitler endorsed. But on the other hand, the Allies were not shy of faults either. One example is the naughty document, a secret pact between Stalin and Winston Churchill, captured in Stalin's handwriting. The document, created in Moscow in 1944 as the Allies closed in on victory over Germany, is called the Percentages Agreement, and it dictated how to divide up Eastern European territories post-war. The meeting took place in October 1944, reportedly in a room where both men had their fair share of whiskey. It contained a list of Eastern European countries alongside their respective percentages. Imagine if the two had gone forward in the drunken stupor and officially validated the document. We might have seen an entirely different Europe. Churchill himself gave it the name Naughty Document in the final volume of his memoir, indicating he knew the consequences would have been dire, even if the whole incident seemed funny in retrospect. 7. Tunguska Event Speaking of Stalin, let's go back to Russia in 1908 when a 12-megaton explosion occurred near the Podkamanaya tunguska River. On the morning of June 30th, an explosion destroyed almost 80 million trees in the eastern Siberian taiga, caused by a meteor airburst. A meteoroid of about 65 to 95 feet in diameter approached the atmosphere at a speed of over 88 million feet per second. The meteor never reached the surface, and there was no impact it disintegrated about three to six miles above the ground. The event's significance cannot be overstated, as it is the largest recorded impact in recorded history. Eyewitnesses in the sparsely populated area recall losing their senses after a loud thud. The blast registered a 5.0 reading on the Richter magnitude scale, even though it was not an earthquake. Imagine the catastrophic effects of such an impact crater anywhere near a metropolitan city. Or better yet, let's not. We hope you enjoyed this video on 7 forgotten historical events you weren't taught in school. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while they're still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.